Hi, everybody. Um, happy to be giving the last talk of the methods day today. So I will talk about Auditor, where we are developing an online platform for auditor experiments. And this is work together with Bob Kalein, who is a program leader here at the CPU, and Ounce Technology, who is a small company that specializes in web application development. So we do uh, cochlear implant research. We are interested in that. We've, you can see one example. These are these ear-worn devices that look like a hearing aid, but they're worn by people who have a really severe or profound hearing loss, where you have an external part, which is white here in this example, um, that is called the speech processor. It picks up the speech from the environment, and then it transmits the sound via um, a magnetic link here, electromagnetic field to an internal part, like an implant that is uh, implanted surgically inside the head of the person. And it has a little electrode array that is surgically here inserted into the cochlea that electrically stimulates the auditory system. And so we are really interested in all these different parts of the uh, sound transmission process with these cochlear implants coming from the first tier, for example, at the outer part is kind of pre-processing strategies that happen in this speech processor, then going through to stimulation strategies, um, focused stimulation where we look inside the cochlear and try to focus the stimulation better, and then further on to patient-specific settings where we try to tailor the stimulation to patient-specific needs, and as well as kind of perception and cognition such as speech perception or music perception or such things. And for remote experiments now, really, um, only this first and last part really qualify. This is what we could do in theory, because for the middle parts, we need a very good experimental control over um, the experiment, basically the study where we use very specialized research hardware. We can't really do that remotely, but for the first and the last part there, we can potentially do something. So, in general, um, remote auditor research is quite difficult because of the acoustic parameters that come into play. So, for example, you don't really know what are the loudspeakers, the headphones that the participants are using, what are the room acoustics, what is the actual sound level. You can't really calibrate it well. Um, there may be background noise that distracts the listener, and we can't really know what is their hearing function. So we can't perform a hearing test, for example. And that is even more problematic now when we think about these hearing devices. When somebody wears such a cochlear implant or a hearing aid, then it's another level of another layer of variability, which we can't control. We don't know what's going on. We don't know if the sound is transmitted properly to them. And that has been an issue previously. So in cochlear implant research, there wasn't much remote research happening. And there has been even, even some study here showing, so this isn't me, this is another Goering, um, that showed significant decreases in speech perception, for example, when they compared between a sound booth, an office environment, or at home, so that they couldn't really compare these results. Um, now, more recently, what has been done is to use some sort of um, direct connection device. So that means you would take a cochlear implant speech processor like this and send that back home basically to the participants together with some sort of tablet computer which runs the app where the experiment is running on and that way it has been shown okay then we get some sort of useful data and it can be compared to lab but this is quite an effort it's quite expensive so each of these guys here costs ten thousand pounds so you don't want to send that around it's quite a risky business maybe um but now there's really a big new opportunity which is that there these cochlear implants now have a sort of wireless direct connection integrated into the device. So now we can use sort of Bluetooth connection um, to transmit the sound directly to the device. So we kind of get rid of all these acoustic problems that we have had previously. So I want to give one quick example of what we do. So here we have some sort of spectrotemporal resolution test that we call, or that is called Stripes that has been developed by Alan Archer Boyd here at the CBU together with Bob Carline. And that uses, for example, three sounds. You have shown here the spectrograms for these sounds, some of which are, one of which is always upward in frequency. So these frequencies move upwards, the other two move downwards, and the listener has to say which one is the upward moving sound. And this gets harder and harder until we reach some sort of perceptual threshold where we, which we want to measure here in an adaptive procedure. 
And so we wanted to evaluate basically if we can use this test in a clinical environment where we can't really control the, all these acoustic parameters that I mentioned as well. So we compared a kind of basic research strategy using a direct connection against like a loudspeaker presentation mode with their actual own device. And we found that basically this test is very robust and we could use this, we could do this. Okay, so this test is robust enough maybe for that application. But you can also see here, one example, we only have like 10 listeners, or what is it, 10 or 11 or nine. Um, and that is a general limitation here of cochlear implant research. So we usually have quite small sample sizes. So we now wanted to see, okay, what happens if we bring this test into the online domain, into a remote version, which we called uh, web stripes. Um, and there we compared basically the, the tests that I mentioned before with a loudspeaker presentation mode shown in orange here, where you present the sound via loudspeaker and in a room against a kind of at home test where we use a Bluetooth connection directly to the cochlear implant or some sort of helper device. But nowadays, most cochlear implants now, as I said, have this Bluetooth link directly integrated. And so we compared this for a couple of listeners. This is quite recent results. And we found quite strong, significant um, across listener correlation here, and that the results more or less are in agreement, at least for the most of these listeners. So that's quite promising. So if we give such a test that we would be interested in now to our cochlear implant volunteers, and they do this test at home, they seem to be getting somewhat similar results here. But now the idea was to really expand this and um, towards especially speech perception experiments, which I'm uh, mostly interested in. So that will be a typical paradigm shown here where we have, for example, speech and noise. We develop some sort of algorithms trying to improve speech processing of the cochlear implant, trying to improve speech perception. And then we compare these different conditions, for example, speech in a background noise situation against uh, speech that has been processed with a machine learning algorithm that tries to pick out, filter out the speech from the background noise. And then we do this, this in a kind of listening experiment. Um, so previously, as I said, we would present these signals via loudspeaker or direct connection, but now we have this new cool feature of this Bluetooth connection, which could be used in remote experiments. And so we started into developing this platform that we call Audito, which mainly was driven by the motivation um, that we want to facilitate testing in COVID times, obviously, and increase our sample sizes in future cochlear implant studies. Um, it should improve convenience for everybody, um, reduce costs due to travel time and experimenter. Um, and what our main goal was to build a sort of flexible system that is at the same time sort of easy to use to de design new experiments. And we want to be able to make this available to colleagues, to our colleagues in the future still while having sort of high experimental control with this direct connection to the CI. So we can still know exactly what sort of sound they receive when they do this test with us. And we benefit from that basically nearly everybody now has a sort of device like a smartphone, tablet, computer, or laptop at home, which has a Bluetooth module integrated so they can use their own device connected to their own cochlear implant. And they have everything they need more or less to do these sort of listening tests now. Um, one key aspect was that we want to allow microphone access. So this was just mentioned by Josh in the previous talk, I think, which was a bit of a feature that may not have been as available before, but that's kind of crucial if you want to record vocal responses and also for us to basically check that the sound transmission via Bluetooth is happening and not via the loudspeaker. So we have some sort of specialized key requirements here. And then our auditory experiment flowchart is fairly simple. It always follows a kind of sequential form like shown here. You start with some introductions. Obviously, you do a couple of checks like the connection and the level. You may have some optional training with feedback. And then you have your tasks in a row that the participant is asked to do. This could be a digital noise task here, which is adaptive, or it could be a speech and noise task, which is not adaptive, where there's vocal responses being recorded, etc. So then you can basically build together your experiment here in this platform. We want to allow for a couple of different tests. They're all could be classified into uh, broadly speech perception tasks, where we have different levels of speech perception, phonemes, words, sentences, um, 
in different forms of tests that are used in the field of auditory research. Basically, you want to be able to, to kind of implement most of these tests. So we try to keep it flexible in that sense so that in the future we can implement most of these tests that are used in research in our field. For example, also sound quality preference ratings where you play two sounds and you ask to listen and to select the preferred one. And then the other categories like sound perception, where we would, for example, have a ranking procedure for pitch or frequency or modulation rate or such things that I mentioned before, the stripes test, which is a kind of alternative uh, forest choice test to measure some sort of detection or perceptual threshold. And we always want to measure the actual response, obviously, and the response time. We want to make sure there is a kind of Bluetooth connection and we have a good sound transmission and we can control that. So we have um, we are developing currently basically the system that consists of an admin website which allows us to then control these different parameters. For example, for the test here for the project, this would include all the parameters for the tasks and the different phases and the conditions and if it's an adaptive test or a fixed test, etc. Then we have a user interface basically where we can define different types of users we have participants which only see obviously the client app to do these tests whereas we also have admins and editors who we could invite our colleagues to design their own experiments in the future and then we have kind of sound section where we just upload all the sounds that we want to use yeah these are always generated offline and then uploaded as a list of wave files for example and they come with some sort of specification file that tells the system then what is the kind of file name, what is the kind of difficulty of that file, et cetera. So the system can understand or use these stimuli. And then here are just some quick screenshots here to show you like what it looks like, but this is still a work in progress, obviously. So we have, for example, a project list where you can uh, generate new projects and you can add these tasks and edit them. We have a stimulus set database where we can upload new stimulus sets, et cetera. And then we have this kind of client facing app that I mentioned, which will look a bit better than this, obviously, but it's um, in development currently where you can check the connection and then you can start tasks, et cetera. So we use two types of responses here to number one is basically visual responses shown here where you have a numpad where you can enter numbers that you heard in the tests or you have a matrix sort of arrangement where you select the words that you heard or you have some sort of multiple choice um, options here that also would allow for feedback basically and the other thing is these vocal responses that I mentioned where the participant would basically press a record button and then answer or repeat what they heard in the sentence or in the stimulus before and that's kind of important because it allows us to do open set speech perception tasks which means we can use much more naturalistic or ecologically valid stimuli now like conversations or audiobooks or whatever um, and we are not as restricted as three digits as i showed before or such and then we have to offline rate these responses so we don't have any uh, automatic system here now you could think now okay let's use a, an automatic speech recognizer to directly interpret these responses but i'm not so keen on that yet maybe in the future when these are perfectly working perfectly then we may think about that again um so yeah to to discuss all this so there are obviously a couple of challenges especially when you think about this compromise between having a very flexible system that allows us to design all these different sort of tasks and usability and complicatedness basically accessibility is what we are currently discussing um, where different sort of visual responses are being made on different screen sizes so we want to make sure obviously that is doable for our volunteers or our participants if they use the smartphone or a laptop etc um, then we have to still validate this so i'm sorry for that but it's still uh, under development so we still have to do the technical development of these couple of bits and also the experimental one where we want to compare the system to a lab um, study for example and our future plans are really to make this available for to other researchers especially here in our group or in, in this at the CBU for example or in our Cambridge hearing group and we want to so my main goal is also to kind of facilitate collaboration with this system so it will enable us to much more easily kind of share our 
experimental data, our algorithm results with other teams, for example, in other countries or in other research centers who may have the, the listeners and may be keen to perform a listening study, but we cannot easily share our experimental setup. So this online system would allow us to do that. We could make them, you know, invite them to the system and they could perform these tests with their uh, participants, for example. Or we could think now about a clinical research environment here at Attenbrooks Hospital, where we could more easily or more quickly uh, directly kind of perform different listening experiments with people who just received their CI, for example, et cetera. So it opens up quite a few possibilities for the future. So I would like to acknowledge here Bob Kalain as well and Ounce Technology, Marge and Phil, who um, are helping us a great deal to achieve this here currently. And then my funding source, which is the MRC and the Cambridge Hearing Group as well. And then I thank you for your attention.